right, well, before Vail was a ski area, Bill Nottingham and his grandson, Bill homesteaded with his brother, Vail Valley in Beaver Creek. They were, and Bill was a sheep uh, homesteader and a rancher and a good friend, and this is from a series of, of images documenting that area. Moving on down to my roots around Fruta, Loma, Colorado, this is Tony Brock. And he's, a, he's, a, he's not with us anymore, but he was a, an immigrant from Italy and raised potatoes. Very kind man, very good friend as well. And then down to the Navajo Raz, Annie Khan, Annie Khan, a wisdom keeper, a medicine woman. A place called Denita Hajane. It's a place where the Anasaza cohabitated with the various Athabascan and Tewa people way back. So Annie would take us out there and guide us. My neighbor for many, many years, Andy Tsinagini, we would take turns in the morning throwing rocks on each other's bedroom windows and waking each other up. And he would walk out into the sunrise and he'd shuffle his feet, shoes untied, throw her hats on throughout the day. Great, great friend. And she was all tough in this image. She was, this was during the branding season, back in the late 70s, back on the res. As soon as I made this image on Tri-X back in the day of film, she dropped the rope and she had some dolls over in the corner and she was playing with those as we started branding. And oh, Cynthia Ben, this is from a ceremony with the Diné called the Canelda. It uh, is the young girl's puberty ceremony, four days, three nights. They bake a cake in the ground all night and a lot of songs. There's a blessing way ceremony that goes on on the final night. And during this, just the, prior to the final night, Cynthia's auntie here is putting cedar back onto and building a fire back on the cake that is now, that batter is in the ground and it cooks all night and in the morning. Then we, re, then we take the fire off and then we kneel down and cut that bread out. And a good friend of mine, uh, owns this Hogan, and this is his sheep herder. And the young man that isn't in this photo is a current, current day medicine man that I mentor. And he also mentors me. And this is in a place called Red Top, just south of Gallup. Way back, way back in the 70s, place called Rough Rock, Arizona, medicine man school. I was hitching a ride, and I landed in this place and never left medicine men and women, this guy would take in four apprentices for four years and teach them the nine day, nine night sings. And now we go clear up into, up into Alaska. Federation of Natives, beautiful, beautiful time up in Anchorage, late October, early November. These young people are from a village where whales are their, their way of life and then their elders are in the audience singing the same, same song. Jumping around down into the little church that really could, the, that little church in Chimayo, New Mexico. Very, very powerful healing comes out of there. You can see the grandma, the matriarch, coming out with her granddaughter as she passes me on the way out. Not my crayon drawing, my image, but I put this in. You can't see the white and yellow crayons. They're up, uh, up in the ceiling somewhere, but... This is for the skin of us all, the white, the yellow, the red, the browns, all of us. You know, in these days and times, you know, everybody has the same color skin in my book. Over into India, just down below the Dalai Lama's center in Dharmasala, northern India, the Tibetan refugee camp, she's East Indian. Word had it on the street that she'd spit on you if, if you didn't treat her right. I never got spit on and made this image. <laughs> And a few days before the Chinese took over Tibet, this man knew that that was going to happen in his mind, and yet he still sat and gave me this image. Something about candid portraits, very, very real to me. I feel like I've worn those clothes a lot of years. And swinging over into another part of India, a place called Armastwar, the home base for the Sikhs, the Golden Temple near Pakistan. So I was walking through the streets a few miles and into the Golden Temple, just making my way. 
coming across this kind of stuff. And then you arrive, they wash your feet, they take your shoes. They feed 40,000 people a day in this place for free, 40,000. So the mantra of the music coming from the Golden Temple, the silverware being served on, washed, eaten on, clanging of real silverware. And so if we had some, some smell to come into the room, the smell of India in the street, in the street, in the street, and in the face of these beautiful Sikhs. You know, so I put this in there as kind of a Rorschach. And just got back from Egypt on an assignment, and this was my boat taxi young man, and going into the island of Pele, into the temple of Isis, early in the morning on the Nile. Beautiful man, beautiful young man. Kids. How can you lose with kids? I mean, they're, they're my mantra. You know, gosh. She's reaching, he's pensive. They still have their innocence, their natural curiosity. She's engaging. Children, oh ho. The last one, uh, just shot a rise festival in Loveland and men, look at this, look at this, look at this, the men carrying their power and their softness, that whole yin energy within the masculine, the yin, the yang, surrounded by women. One of those moments. Oh, thank you. <laughs>